So I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was asked to tell the story about En sak idag. It's Swedish for one thing today. It's a small video project of mine that I just started, you know, because I can. So the basic concept is that every morning around 7, 8, I publish a video. It's supposed to be 3, 4, 5, maybe 6 or 7 minutes, definitely not longer, where I talk about one thing that has happened while, you know, people in Sweden were asleep. It's usually something that has to do with technology, with the internet, something that has to do with services or hardware or something that kind of blows people's mind. And I try to put it in a context and make it tangible to people, make it understandable and give them some kind of general push to go think about this, consider this, what could be the second and third order consequences of this, how could this affect you. So it, it's kind of a jump start for your brain and it's, it's supposed to kick off the day for people. The format is supposed to be super simple. It's just a camera on a tripod, me talking into the camera, telling myself very strongly that it's live so I don't start to do retakes and like I do now when I try to package it more, more neatly. I'm just supposed to be talking straight into the camera for a couple of minutes about something that I think people should care about. No editing, no post-processing, no fuss. If I say something wrong or stumble on the words, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. It, it's the only way to make it manageable because I know if I would start to post-process and, and work with the material afterwards, I would never stop. And the, the, the video thing, the simple thing is, is really crucial here because I decided to do this in video for two reasons. One, video is smoking hot and I have explored it way too little you know i'm i'm the kind of guy who always says that you, you need to dig in and you need to do those things to really learn about them so i needed to learn about video and i needed to understand how video works on the different platforms and more about that later on but also there is this thing i i do constant monitoring of all the things that happen in the world and a couple of years ago i used to do a write-up every morning i took 5, 10, 15, 20 links to stuff that was important and I made a comment about it and I posted that in, in my blog and, and distributed it in, in different channels. And it was so much work. It was you know, incredibly rewarding because it was a way for me to enhance my monitoring and, and really you know, push myself to understand further. But it was so much work. I could spend three, four hours every morning before my regular work started to do those posts, right? So now I spend still a lot of time researching and, and trying to understand and package what, what today's message should be. But then the production has to be super simple. So just straight into the camera, no after work, no post processing, and then just straight up with the material. Super important. And on that note, it might be interesting to realize just how this project started. So um, I, I got early access to, to the video function on, on uh, LinkedIn and decided to try that. And, you know, if you want to try something and try it for real, you need to package it in some way. So that's how I came up with In Sokido as a concept, one thing today as a concept. Uh, but, but, you know, why just publish that on LinkedIn? Why not distribute it on, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, definitely YouTube, and just push it out to those different channels to see how they, how they receive something like this. So where do I get the most comments? Where do I get the most uh, uh, engagement? Where do I get the most views? Uh, where do I have the best statistics? What happens on a platform like LinkedIn when I use their native video format and so forth? So it is kind of an effort to, to try and, and spread knowledge and, and get discussions back. But it's also very much an experiment to see how those different platforms play out and to, like I said, learn about video, learn more about video. I have some preliminary findings, of course. I can realize that Facebook is definitely, at least for me, the platform where there's the most engagement. That's where the discussions really take off and that's where I get the most views. I also realize that uh, YouTube is, is really rewarding you when you do something that is regular and, and you know where there is a structure to it so it's small numbers but I have 800 subscribers now after 44 episodes of En Sok Idag. When I started I had basically zero subscribers so that is a good takeoff. 
I've also realized that I can, I can you know, uh, reuse the material. So my playlist on YouTube is, is redistributed as a podcast and I have some 200 podcast subscribers now uh, and they can, they can choose if they want to subscribe on iTunes and get the video version or if they're on Overcast, they just get the audio version. Uh, and, and it's, I mean, I'm going to do some real heavy digging into the data here, but there is a lot of things happening and it's incredibly rewarding to see the differences between the platforms. When this started out equipment wise, I was on vacation. So I just basically used the FaceTime camera on my computer uh, and uh, the wired headset, you know, the Apple headset. And that worked pretty good. That was, you know, definitely okay. But you always want to tweak things, right? So I've tried different versions. I, I worked with the iPhone. I worked with um, the Canon G7X. But what I've come to decide on is actually a pretty heavy equipment. So this is the, this is the Sony A7R Mark II with a beautiful 85 millimeter 1.4 lens. And that gives me that beautiful bokeh in the background. And then there is this um, Sennheiser AVX wireless uh, receiver that goes with, with the wireless body pack that I have in my pocket. And, and the beauty with, with this Sennheiser AVX is that it, it's, it just works, right? So it's, it's plug and play and forget, and I, I really like that. So I want to have, I want to have good technology. I want you know, the, the image to be as good as it can be, and I want the sound to be okay so people can actually survive listening to it. But um, yes, so I probably carry around too much weight because this equipment goes with me everywhere now. So it's like six kilos extra to carry around. Uh, and also I need to carry around my, my iPad because I can't flip the viewfinder on, on the Sony camera. So I need this application called Play Memories to make sure that I can see the, the viewfinder here and, and I can adjust the exposure and color calibrate and so forth. But it works and it's fun. Technology is fun. Yeah. Um, and of course it is hard work. It's hard work to be a one man production show like this, but especially since it is on top of everything else I'm doing. So I'm, I'm still traveling. I still have full day, you know, appointments with clients and so forth. But I've always been doing the monitoring every morning. I've been trying to, you know, look into the trends. I have a list of a hundred trends, hundred technology trends. It's not exactly the hyper, the, the, the Gartner hype curve, but it's in that, you know, same general direction. I bring some new ones on and throw some old ones out. And that is the foundation. And I've set up a system of different tools that help me monitor those. Uh, and the first thing I do when I wake up is to try and identify which one should I talk about today, which one is, which one is new, fresh, uh, adaptable to people's everyday lives and so forth. And from there on I start to do some further research on that specific news, that news piece, that topic. So I probably spend about two hours every morning before I put myself in front of the camera. I've been asked why I do En Saki Dag in Swedish and it's really simple actually. It's, it's about the time zone thing. One of the main reasons for me to do this is to get the discussion going. I want to educate people but I also want to get something back and that is in, in terms of you know the discussion. I get links that I wasn't aware of, I get viewpoints that I didn't think of myself and so forth. And that is incredibly important. And I realized that even if I, you know, probably with some effort could do this in English, I would be disconnected from the English time zone thing because I, I must do this in the morning and you know everyone on in, in the States are sleeping in the morning so I basically have to dig where I live right I have to do this in in the context of, of Sweden because that's where I spend the most of my time it's just a practicality going forward there will be more of this i've done 44 episodes now i'm going to do at least 100 and then do a, a proper review of what i've done and how i can move forward and what i can learn from it and 
I publish everything today under a Creative Commons license, so it's free for everyone to use. And there is some media outlets who have started to bring these in and, and distribute them in their newsletters every morning and so forth. I think more of that is going to happen. I think there might be some sponsored edition, you know, in, in specific tracks of this. But the foundation of Ensoc et al, one thing today, is always going to be free and, and you know, my, my own playground. Besides that, I don't know. Let's see where it takes me. I usually don't do jump cuts and, and any editing like I do right now. So you can probably see how the light is changing in here. That usually doesn't happen. And a final word. Go do something like this. It is so rewarding to get a structure and get a routine where you monitor the things that is important, you share it with people around you, you get feedback, you get different viewpoints back, you get you know the response you get. It is so rewarding, so it's worth every piece of blood, sweat and tears, I promise. Go do.